On Saturday the 16th of May 2015, a few kilometers to the east of the small Limpopo town of Murimulle, a tanker was making its way to Zimbabwe. Its cargo, an estimated 28,000 liters of sulfuric acid. Sulfuric acid is one of the most potent inorganic acids that we have in, in the world. It's used in the manufacture of many industrial chemicals as a caustic agent to remove organic matter from drains and pipes and stuff like that. The Clay Nail River is a tributary of the Nail River, which flows slowly through Murimulle. Its wide floodplain incorporates the Nails Flay Nature Reserve, a very important wetland ecosystem in South Africa for about 370 species of birds. This Saturday, was like any other, and Petro van Aert and her husband Matthew were busy unpacking the goods that they hawk at the intersection of Nelson Mandela and Tabombeki drives. At around 8.15 a.m., the tanker approached the intersection and according to eyewitnesses, the heavy vehicle with its deadly cargo was traveling too fast. To see no CCTV cameras captured the following dramatic seconds. I looked towards the truck and I saw the truck coming. I saw him, he was going to fall. The truck uh, fell there. Uh, you can see over there, there's like four off moons over there. It bounced four times and it sprayed this acid here. The spot now, mate. Here, my neck, my bene. What else you can see spots? Petro and Matthew were lucky to escape with their lives. The splatter marks on the wall behind Petro's stall show just how much of the corrosive acid flew in her direction. The sulfuric acid flowed unchecked onto the street and then thanks to the dip in the road and gravity, on towards the clay nail. Your wood is burned, your nails are burned. And yeah, I believe that this is a very good place with water and water. It was midday, a full four hours after the accident when a fire truck carrying water arrived at the scene. This is when things went from bad to worse. And what they turned a disaster in was a total mess up because first of all, if, an, if you have an acid spill, you cordon the place off, you build binding walls to retain that particular acid spill. Then you bring in neutralizing agents and you bring a professional company to contain the spill and to neutralize the area to pick up all that waste material and to take it to a proper dump site. Unfortunately, they came in with hoses and they rinsed all the sulfuric acid off the spill site into the water body, into the riverbed, and created a total disaster out of something which could have been managed quite simply with the right tools and the right chemicals and the right people. The Nail River effectively became a channel for a caustic river of acid, killing all life in the water close to the spill site. Around 10,000 liters could have been spilled and gotten into, into the river. Um, but then it is not just the river, it's also the banks, you know, and the environment around there. The plant life, the animal life, um, insects, fish, amphibians, reptiles, anything alive, even virus and bacteria and pathogens, they will all be digested. So everything will be killed off and the biosystem in that river or the water body will be sterilized. These visuals, supplied by a local newspaper, show authorities dumping lime in the water to try and neutralize the acid. We are still very concerned with, with where things are. At the spillage site and downstream of there, until about two kilometers or something like that. But from the spillage downstream, we really request that the farmers still refrain, and not just the farmers, but the community as well, refrain from using that water because it is not safe. This information was devastating to farmers downstream. It is a bit worrying because what does that mean now? Um, about our farming operation and the investment that we've made. Mutimula needs farmers like us to, to help the, the local economy. I mean, we employ people from here. We're really trying to help 
and build something good here. So if they're not supporting us in protecting not just the stream of water that's going to be running past our farms, um, then I don't know <laughs> what's going to happen because then that means we must just pack up and leave, you know. Retired professor Kuos Prinsloo runs a business that depends on a reliable clean water supply. While his farm is not directly on the Nail River, any pollutants in the water would impact his environmentally sensitive projects. Schoon water is is baie belangrik, a schoon omgewing is baie belangrik. Enige besoedeling uh, um, uh, deur swaals hier is is 'n ernstige situasie veral die wyse waarop dit hier plaasgevind het. Jy weet ons sit juist met 'n sensitiewe stelsel wat as gevolg van uh, besoedeling en soms ernstige besoedeling uh, reeds op een meespunt is en uh, ek dink hierdie uh, swaals hier storting in die rivier uh, ek dink ek het baie groter skade gedoen as wat ons besef. The impact of the acid spill did not just affect residents and farmers close to the actual spill site. The Nails Flay Nature Reserve, a declared Ramsar site, lies east of the town. What had happened upstream from the reserve put everyone there on edge. Oh, of course I was concerned. Um, when you hear acid spill and then acid spill, it's, it was a nightmare. And what do you do? What, how do I stop it? What, what can I do to prevent it from coming into the wetland? I mean, this is one of the jewels in South Africa. We are a Ramsar site, uh, which means that we are a signatory um, to the uh, conservation of wetlands and waterfowl habitat that was signed in Ramsar. It's a beautiful reserve and the wetland has got a high value conservation-wise, tourism-wise. So yeah, it's, it is something that we all should be concerned about. While in Murimulle, 5050 tried on numerous occasions to secure an interview with a representative from the local municipality to no avail. The clay nail that flows through town appears to be in a dismal state and we wanted some answers. So instead, we mailed this list of questions to the municipal manager, Sam Mabucha. In his response on the same day, he stated that the municipality would have to contact national departments for consent to answer our questions. Some days later, we mailed Mr. Mabucha again, asking for a response from the municipality. The next day, we received this correspondence from Mabure Mampa, Murimulla's social development and community services manager. The municipality was greatly concerned by the spillage of sulfuric acid in the nail stream. The firefighters tried by all means to manage the situation. They made a total mess. They shouldn't have been there with a the firefighter. There should have been no water dispensed in that situation. Nothing was done to contain the spill correctly. There was no um, limestone or any alkaline material disposed into that site to contain the spill or to neutralize the spills. So I think they're telling a total distruth to the public out there. Ms. Mampa's response continues. The area was cordoned off and community members were informed through loud hailing and pamphlets or posters. Interestingly, this CCTV footage, recorded an hour after the incident, shows curious onlookers standing right next to the accident site. A criminal incident has happened there, so you could call it a crime scene. So you cannot have everyone just stomping over the whole place, you know, for different reasons. We are very disappointed uh, in the way that uh, the local authorities uh, handle this disaster. They don't have the knowledge how to deal with a crisis like this, there's no capacity. And, uh, and they just took the easy way out to hose the asset into the river. Now, uh, that's going to have a long-lasting effect. It's not something that you can eradicate overnight. Unless they get the pH up by, by neutralizing the, the sulfuric acid in the river system, nothing can recover, nothing can survive, nothing can grow, nothing can recuperate, nothing can repatriate into that area. So it will be sterilized until they do the right thing and sterilize the water body. It seems this is not the first assault on the Nail River. And when the residents of Murimulla heard that 5050's cameras were in town, they were eager to voice their frustrations about other sources of water pollution that have been impacting the river for years. Dit is riool wat daar loop. Dit is eigenlijk vir onderstel om te gaan na die rioolplaas toe. Kijk, die rioel gaan in die, die nuile rivier in en het sal uiteindelik gaan het een of ander tyd by die, by die nuils vly uitkom. Dit is al een hele paar jaar wat het so aangaan. The problem of raw sewage flowing into the nail was publicly reported as far back as September 2012. Footage we filmed and information from local residents seems to indicate that very little has changed in the last three years. 
with raw sewage flowing unchecked into the waterway, in addition to the acid spill with its potentially devastating long-term effects, the last thing that the Nail River needs is another source of pollution. Up behind us now is the uh, Waterburg District Municipality Abattoir. They are slaughtering about between 50 and 100 cattle per day. They uh, connected a pipe from the abattoir, which is running down under the road here, and it comes straight into this little uh, upper stream of the Nile River, where they wash all the stomach contents, the blood, everything from the abattoir. Everything has just been simply dumped into the river here. And it's, uh, it's also something that we have been reported to the municipality time and again, but simply no action has been taken. Animal tissue and globules of fat are clearly visible flowing into an open channel with a terrible accompanying stench. The river of blood flows steadily for a few hundred meters heading in the direction of the river. Water Act is very clear that you can't discharge uh, raw effluent, in this case blood or any material related to that, in any water course or in any perennial stream. So that is prohibited. In certain instances, we have instituted criminal charges, and for a first offence, it's five years, and a second offence, ten years jail sentence and or a fine. It's the first time that I hear about this matter, and as by fact that my team is in the area, and I will ask them to investigate, and we can keep you updated on the outcome of our results. When the river of blood from the municipal abattoir was queried with the municipality, their response was as follows. The issue of blood flowing from the abattoir to the nail has been investigated by the municipality, and it was found that those were only allegations that were not true. What is disturbing about this response is that since August 2013, reports of the river of blood have appeared in the local newspaper, Dipos. Since the acid spill occurred, the pH levels in the Nail River appear to be slowly returning to normal. But the time 50-50 spent in Murimulle revealed an ecologically important river system stressed to its limits. Such excessive water pollution has consequences far downstream and impacts farmers and residents alike. Well, what we saw in this particular case, I'm very sure that the Mori Miller municipality did not actually look after the river system at all, because if they'd done the right thing, we wouldn't have seen this disaster. So they negated the responsibility in terms of a local authority of looking after the environment, first of all, and looking after a major water body and looking after the interest of the people around the water body because many of the farmers, the substance farmers and the normal household people rely on that water body for the fresh water and for the sustenance given to the population around there. It is hoped the Department of Water and Sanitation will investigate the information 5050 has shared with them. Because the Nail River needs to be protected, as do all rivers in our water-scarce country.